we're going to take a look at the bash rc file is robust and works well on both ubuntu and mac and down here you can see the url i've got for my uh, setups repository there's the uh, github address so i'm just going to minimize that away all right so that's the topic today and here's my actual uh that's my screen here Let's zoom in a little bit and you can see here here is my dot bash rc file so let me go through a few of the things here the first three lines are about um, setting us a couple of the parameters for my history file I'm not going to go into those right now uh, on line four we have I'm defining a function here called git branch I'm actually going to be defining that again in the next line line five bash functions but um, if you're setting up this for the first time and you don't have that file to include yet this can give you a nasty uh, error in your your bash rc bring up a terminal um, ability so if you put this line for first git branch it'll prevent that happening um, as you can see the comment there prevent error if bash function is not available then I have, and I'm going to split my terminal here, one of the things that I do I use uh, tmux for that so the next thing I do uh, I include this bash underscore functions shell file and the way that I'm doing that with the test command is if the function, if the file doesn't exist uh, I won't get a problem um, if it does exist, then using that, um, the previous parameters is what dollar underscore is about, um, actually execute that file. So this way, this will include all of these five files, but if they don't exist, it won't have a problem, which is kind of handy. Um, there's also auto jump, which I sometimes use um, as, a, as, a, as a command line aid for um, recalling commands. And then it's kind of interesting on line 10, um, I have ls dash dash color equals all, but that only works on, I don't have it off the top of my head, either OS X Mac or uh, Linux Ubuntu, but it doesn't work on the other. So what I do, it's a little bit sneaky, is try to do the command and I let a, a, an error, um, I capture the error, and if I get an error, then I make an alias for my ls that does dash dash color equals al. Uh, otherwise, I make an alias ls dash capital G, which is like, I think that might be the, the, uh, the, the Debian Ubuntu version. So kind of tricky, kind of sneaky to get that working right. The next few lines are some of my favorite ones. We've got setting the, setting the host, and here we have some of the... Uh, character escaping that's really unreadable that will give you the colors that you want and basically what I'm extracting here is the uh, dollar host does exist but I'm adding um, this uh, coloring around it and then I grab the time you can see in there that's actually the time itself and again this is coloring around it and I get the location uh, by executing present working directory and doing a little set um, and this is obviously the, one of the worst or best um, sets uh, that I've had. Um, it's basically getting the first few directories and the last few directories of your current location. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And this is one of the most useful ones, the um, executing the, if it exists, that's what type minus t git branch equals function does. So again, a little check if it exists, and if it does, um, it sets the branch to be this git branch function, which was again was why I did it here. The reason I did it here, particularly for this function, is because if, if these don't exist, um, you might not get the error the way that I've done them, but as soon as you start to do git stuff, uh, if you have this defined, you will get the error. So it's needed straight away for any, any git uh, commands that are using this. So I set up all of those, and then I set my PS1 prompt prop down here to be the time the user the host location the branch so if I do right now if I go to my setups you can see the time the user the host the location and the branch and the branch one from git is particularly useful and then I have ps2 which is the secondary prompt 
I have uh, that uh, set a certain way. The other thing that I do, uh, the next thing I do at line 17 is I set minus OVI, I'm a VI user. And what that actually lets me do is if I have a bunch of characters, say like that, say it was valid, and I want to edit them at the command line using VI, I can just go up arrow and then hit escape. And then I can use all of my VI commands. So I can go like zero. Um, I'm going to so I just hit I for insert and I'm going to put a couple of spaces here because then escape zero. If I go W for word by word, word, W, that was word, word, word. So you can do all the things that you do in uh, VI at the command line itself by doing set minus O VI. Um, set my editor to be Vim um, so that when Git is doing um, messages and the like, it's set up. Um, then if you're using Heroku, there's something I have set there. Python, I have something for that. And uh, uh, a nicer way uh, for non text files of piping them out. And then the next thing is if I have to set this sometimes, if the bash version is, is not, is uh, if it's greater than four, auto CD is available to me. So I can set that up, um, which lets me um, tab complete for directories. And a few things here that are kind of specific to my setup lately. I've got Node, I've got RBN for my Ruby stuff, I've got Go for using that. Um, Java runtime environment. So most folks won't have to worry about these unless they need those specific uh, environmental things. Um, and that's about it. That's the last line there. Um, so it's fairly short and simple. Um, the other lines that it includes, the other commands it includes, the bash functions, the bash aliases, and we'll take a look at those quickly. So we'll take a look at the bash functions. So there's a couple of fun ones here. This is about uh, I haven't used to actually use this one in a while. This one is make directory. Um, this one here, bup, is bash up. It's what I actually use to save my, I'm always updating my setups, these setup files, adding a new alias or something like that. And so I want that to be stored centrally. So I have this little routine that I go through with my, um, I, I put, I always put these setups the setup repository in a drop not, or the joke on Dropbox there, but a drop not setups directory, and then I go through this process. So all I have to do is type bup and then the file name. I don't even have to give the location. It'll assume it's in my home directory. And um, any configura configuration file that I update, um, I can do this to get it updated on the GitHub. So I use that quite a lot. This is the, the Git branch which goes with my PS1 prompt I was talking about a little earlier to show uh, my current branch and a little new alias which I'm going to go into right now. So that was the bash functions file. Now here's my bash aliases. You can see it's pretty big. And the, for me, all these one letter aliases are incredibly useful. I think my number one all time is just G for git status. So if I go to setups and I do G, that's good status. That's kind of nice. CD back to where I was. Okay, so that's uh, that was the G one, the H for history with one letter, my one letter LS with all of those flags on. G if it works. Um, P for PW. It's just it's really handy to have these little one letter ones. I really like them a lot. Um, and a couple of tricks I do here I set my workbase and my workbase get a couple of places where all of all of my work files are under it and then when I have aliases that are within that work tree I use that um, I use that variable I use those two variables so that I can move because they point to the specific year of where I store stuff so I can move I can change this each year I increment this and uh, go through a process to remove old stuff and I can just change it in one spot nice and dry and it gets changed for all of these so there's some a lot of one letter ones here there's a few two and three letter ones that are are very useful for me um, and then there's some specific ones I've been using 
uh, lately for Ruby. I've got Rub to go to that directory. And that's about it for those. And then um, there's all the grep ones here, which are kind of nice. And then there's all of the Git ones here. You can see I have a lot. These are very handy to have in Git. But there is actually also some other Git ones, which I'll show you in my Git config file, which is also in this home directory. And this is kind of interesting because you can see here I've got like CO, for example. I've got two aliases here, CO for checking. And the reason I have these in my Git config, as opposed to just my bash alias or something like that, is, is um, Git completion. So let me just show you that. So, if I go to my setups, which is a, 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 a git repository, and if I want to do git and use that co checkout, and I want to get branches auto completing like that, I have to use a git aliases, a git alias because of the auto for the auto completion. So that's about it. Uh, those are the the other files that I include. Um, this is a little. Um, this is actually the git completion um, script, which is not always available on all systems, which does the bat, which does the um, like the branch completion, and that is about it. So use with caution, take what you need, and I hope you enjoy. Good luck. Bye.